Hey folks, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners. I got a new boss this year, and uh, he knows that I do a lot of air gunning stuff, and wanted to know what a good air gun would be for plinking in the backyard, teaching his kids about um, shooting safety, and then he's got uh, the occasional chipmunk or squirrel that he wants to take care of. And I really put a lot of thought into what that recommendation was because you know he's my new boss and I want to make sure I'm giving him some good information so I reached out to a couple people and thought about some other recommendations I'd made in the past and decided I would really put some testing into it he wasn't in an immediate hurry to make a purchase so I had a little bit of time I ran over to the Pyramid Air website and they had the Umarex Fusion 2 in stock. It's a 177 CO2 rifle. It uses two 12 gram CO2 cartridges uh, and it's uh, shooting that 177 pellet at a respectable speed. Um, I'll throw the uh, chrono numbers of what I got for the 10 grain JSB pellet, but um, I was pleased with how fast it was shooting, so it seemed like it could be reasonable for some very small animal pest control. Um, and then it was a question of accuracy. So we're talking about this being the perfect out the back door gun. What I want to take a look at is because we're using a red dot, which isn't particularly easy to adjust for windage or elevation, and because it doesn't have defined aim points where you can take a measured holdover, I want to see how flat the trajectory is between, you know, right around five yards and let's say 15 yards. I just want to see what that curve looks like. I've mounted the red dot as low as I can to the bore so that hopefully we're getting pretty flat trajectory, especially at these close ranges. But I want to check that out. So I've made a chart. Basically we're going to take shots at each distance moving the target away and uh, I'm going to try it with two different pellets. I'm going to try it with the FX 10.3 grain pellet and I'm going to try it with the Air Arms 8.4 grain pellet. Pretty common pellet weights and uh, really all made by JSB in some way shape or form. So we'll see how uh, that trajectory fluctuates as we move away from the target. To avoid any possibility of pellet drop off because the CO2 levels are going down or any unevenness between uh, shot to shot, what I'm gonna do is take one shot with the heavier pellet, wait 30 seconds, take one shot with the lighter pellet, uh, and we're also gonna start the test off with fresh CO2. So to get the CO2 out or get the CO2 in, it's a simple matter. You've got a rubber knob up here. It's actually a two piece design. We're gonna unthread or unscrew the rubber cap. And that's just gonna let the CO2 vent from the old cartridges. Um, I'm finding you get three to four magazines um, with two CO2 two cartridges, so 30 or 40 rounds. Um, that's what I've seen. Now I'm shooting from a basement out into the outdoors. Um, you know, the, the issue of course with this is it's a CO2 gun. So depending on temperature, things like velocity are, are, gonna, um, are gonna differ just a little bit. But once you have this loosened and the CO2 is vented off, then you take the knurled portion and screw that out. And then your CO2 cartridges. To get this second CO2 cartridge to convince it to come out, I give it a little bit of a tap with the uh, little PVC pipe. Um, that just gets pinched in there pretty good and you gotta give it a little vibration to release. So I don't wanna hit it with anything hard, but that little bit of tap with a CO2 pipe um, gets the job done pretty quickly and you know, it's got a piece of PVC laying around for some project. So set those off to the side 
and now we're going to put the new ones in. These guys haven't been used yet. Never hurts to put a drop of Pelgun oil on the tip of a CO2 cartridge. That helps keep seals lubricated. So one goes in, tip first. The other one goes in, tip back. And then with the rubber cap backed all the way off, use the knurled part, that knurling there to screw that in. So you get that in there and finger tight. And then now the rubber cap does come off and there's a little um, flat spot. I'll uh, throw a picture of that up so you can see it up close. But the rubber cap just makes it easier to, to turn. You're going to hear it go when it punctures the CO2 seal. You just want to tighten that down all the way. And then she's ready to go. Well, I'm going to load one magazine up with the Air Arms 8.4 grain Diablo field pellets. And then I'm going to load the second magazine up with the FX pellets. And I predict that the hardest thing to do <laughs> will be to not screw up the magazines. These magazines are simple to load. Um, you have to turn them, hold them in a position, get you a little bit of a close up on this, drop the pellet in, make sure it's all the way in, and then uh, once it's in there, you're set. So that's the Air Arms magazine set up. And now we'll do the FX mag. So magazine like that. Take a pellet, drop it in the hole, and then you can rotate it forward. Take another pellet, drop it in there, rotate it forward. It'll always roll back then to the next loaded pellet. It's got some sort of internal mechanism that handles that, which is cool. So drop it in, roll it forward. It's obviously a little more complicated to do at this angle, but it loads really good. And more importantly, uh, it feeds really well when you're shooting it. I haven't had any issues at all with, uh, you know, squishing a pellet, going off to the side, anything. Um, nothing bad has happened. And uh, the gun comes with two magazines, which is nice. So you got that spare mag. And like I said before, I think I said before, they're 10 round magazines. So... Decent, uh, decent capacity. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, nine round magazines. Nine rounds. Um, I don't know if you can see in there, but there is a little. Uh, try and get focus on that. It does tell you it's numbered, so you can see um, what what round you're on. Okay, so. I've got uh, magazine set. I got a target set out, and I'm going to start shooting, and we'll be back shortly with the results.
So I'm being distracted by a squirrel out in the backyard range at about 50 yards. Um, but I do not have the right gun <laughs> for a 50 yard shot. So we're gonna ignore the squirrel and we're gonna take this five yard shot on the target. Now here's the five yard shot with the air arms. Okay, now time to move the target. All right, I just finished the testing out to 15 yards. Let's go take a look at what the target looks like. I got a beautiful day for some testing, especially since we're shooting the 177s. Um, give you an idea here. We really almost no wind right now. So nothing to complain about on that end. And you can see here we are out of 15 yards. And I will tell you that you can color me impressed by this. So you can see the top row is the Air Arms 8.4 grains. Now I'm shooting with a four MOA dot, that Bushnell's a four MOA dot. So actually out here, um, the dot is as big as that gray target spot that I, I made on this target. But boy, if you, if you look all of those shots, that, that close one at five, that pellet is still coming up to meet the optic. Um, but all of those are close to, if not within, and I, I created that as a half inch target circle. So those are all within a half inch, definitely within the kill zone when you're talking about head shooting either a squirrel or a chipmunk. And Boy, out to 15 yards with that red dot mounted really low, you're going to be able to take this rifle and um, pretty much take care of any small backyard pests out to 15 yards. Um, maybe it even goes to 20. Uh, I don't know. Didn't shoot that far. But definitely out to 15 yards. Um, you've got a lean out the door backyard pest control gun that is quiet enough that you're not going to disturb any neighbors and if you're like me where people know that you're into air guns and they're asking you hey what should i get and then you say well you know i'd get an fx dreamline or something like that and they're like ah there's no way i'm spending that kind of money um you've got an opportunity to get something that's going to be fun for plinking good for kids to shoot a uh, great tool to teach firearm safety and uh, you'll be able to do a little backyard pest control to boot. I can see that Maverick's really excited about this gun. He wants to get into the mix. He got a little taste of tracking some squirrels yesterday, and I'm sure he wants to get back out at it. But, um, you know, on the question of, is this a gun that I can recommend? I would say absolutely. So, Umarex Fusion 2, it's a nice, nice little rifle. Super lightweight. Um, I should say that. Very lightweight gun, very easy to manage. And uh, it's a lot of fun shooting with that red dot. Nine round magazine, um, you know, it's, uh, it's an okay trigger, nothing special, but uh, it, it pulls decently, does the job. Other things I might not have mentioned, it's got a safety um, and you can decock it. So uh, all stuff that's, uh, that's worth knowing. Uh, be careful on the decocking though. If you've already put a round down the pipe, that's still in there. There's no way to no way to back that out. So, um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll see what I can do to get you an answer. But uh, 
I think this one uh, is definitely a plus in the is it worth it category and it's an easy rifle to recommend if you've got friends who are new to the sport and they're just looking for something to do a little shooting with, have a little fun with. Um, so we're going to take a walk and uh, give you an idea of what it can do from a pest control standpoint. So I just took a squirrel with a headshot using JSB domed pellets. The little squirrel was hanging out where it shouldn't be. And here are the results. So that's plenty of accuracy and plenty of power for small critter pest control, squirrels and under. So the gun is super lightweight, very easy to shoot. It's got a fairly short length of pull on it. The bolt action is nice. You know it's all the way back, you know it's all the way forward. And in terms of uh, clinking, You can't beat it for fun. So there is what I would consider to be a hidden feature on the rifle. If you look, you've got these slots in here. There are also slots on the bottom. And it turns out, if you get some of these accessory rails, Picatinny rails, with the little like top hat connectors, this is actually set up so you can slot Picatinny rails in. Now, I haven't seen this anywhere um, advertised, but uh, it's kind of one of those cool features. The top hat part is a little bit fiddly in terms of how you get it in there and get it to lock, um, but that'll lock it right in there. And now you've got an accessory rail. I suppose if you wanted to put a laser on there, I'm not ever thinking about laser when, I, uh, when I'm putting a rail on, but if you were gonna go out looking at like field mice in your backyard you could put one on the side and pop a green flashlight on there you could also um, as I've done uh, and you, you'll see it a little bit later uh, throw a bipod on there now I'm not a big fan of clone bipods um, but I do have one that I picked up just to kind of see um, how bad it was or how much I would have to modify it to get it to be acceptable um, but that, that cheap clone bipod on here, um, it's a, it's a knockoff Atlas, um, that, uh, you know, for this gun at its price point, it gets the job done. As far as the actual build quality, um, it is a solid unit, um, feels solid, sounds solid, uh, it is comfortable. It comes right up to your cheek. It's got a thumb hole, uh, you know, thumb through grip, pistol grip, which I prefer. Um, the trigger's not awful. It's a little long. Um, I have a little arthritis in my trigger finger and I have found the best way for me to shoot is actually with my middle finger. And um, it, it does the job. It's not match grade. It's not trying to be match grade. If anybody tells you it's match grade, uh, they've never fired a match grade trigger. I guess that's, that's that. Um, it does come with a scope. It's not a great scope. Um, it's a plain reticle. So you're gonna be guessing if you're trying to do any holdover or hold under anyway 
Um, it was not a scope that I looked at and thought, man, I want to look through that scope. And I decided for this project, I wanted to do something that's a, a little bit on the fast acquisition side. And that's why I went with the red dot. Um, I'll uh, toss a link out there. This one I got off of Amazon. Uh, it's a four MOA dot. It's got 11 steps of brightness. Um, very simple, straightforward. And the reason I went with it was because of how low it mounts to the bore of the rifle. So you do have a rubberized butt pad, um, which is nice because it's grippy. You got kind of this over molded section, but it's, uh, it's just one solid piece. You do have some texturing on the grip. I wouldn't consider it to be really aggressively enough to be grippy, but it is a different texture. And that repeats itself up here on the foregrip. Uh, but again, while it is textured, it's not like it's gonna really help you um, catch anything. Out front, you've got their silent air moderator, um, which I guess you can either like or dislike the triangle shape, but it does the job, man. Um, this is a very backyard friendly rifle um, and, and you'll have no problems doing a little shooting in your backyard with it. Um, you may have heard uh, before when I was shooting, but uh, as it should be, the impact on the know your limit target is louder than the impact or the, the noise that the gun makes. A um, little bit of mechanical noise from the action, um, but not too bad. Just a really fun gun to shoot. And I think, you know, if you put uh, your kids under the your watchful eye, this is a great platform for them to learn to uh, do some shooting. So is there anything I would change? Um, it would make things more complicated, but the magazine system, when you run out of pellets, um, you can keep cycling the bolt and fire nothing but CO2. Um, I guess I'm spoiled by magazines that give me an indication that, hey, time to feed the gun. Um, but, uh, you know, they're putting this together to come out at a price point. And if I have to choose between reliable cycling and feeding or a, a you know some sort of bolt open empty feature 100 percent of the time i will take quality of feeding and this does a really nice job of putting the pellets into the barrel without uh without any problems or any damage happening so very happy with the way it works it's one of those things um i gotta be honest with you um I don't really see at this price point much else that you can say about this. This is really, I never did fire one of the Fusion 1s, um, but uh, this is this is definitely um, the answer to the question of, is it worth it? Yes, and if I've got somebody who doesn't want to dive into air gunning and they're looking for a recommendation on what gun to get, um, this is the one I'm going to tell them to, to pick up. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you found it useful and informative. If not, maybe just a little bit entertaining. But uh, if you did see it and like it, and you can give us a, a thumbs up, much appreciated. Um, this video will have gone out first on Airgun 101. Um, so I recommend you run over there and, and check the other creators that are putting stuff together there. Um, it's not that I don't like YouTube or want to put stuff on YouTube. It's that YouTube sometimes comes by and says, we don't like what you're saying, which it's their platform and they get to do that. Uh, the nice thing about Airgun 101 is it's been created for air gunners uh, and you're going to see good content over there that's not going anywhere, which is a, a pretty big plus. When you think about how much work goes into a video like this and then you, uh, you think about making it but there's a risk that it's going to get taken down it's a little bit of a demotivator so uh, check us out on airgun 101 
We also put a lot of pictures up during the week on Instagram. Uh, a lot of stuff that we just don't have time to film and edit. Um, but if you're into following kind of the day-to-day, -day, what are we doing? Some of that, a lot of that is pest control. Um, give us a look over on uh, Instagram. You can either follow at Wisconsin Air Gunners or at PJ underscore Clark. Until the next video, everybody, shoot safe, shoot straight, and we'll see you around. Thanks for watching.